Uh, hello friends. This video is going to be about making an aura that can track information that persists between displayings of the aura. So for example, maybe you want to make something that tracks how many times you have used your health stone over the course of a raid, or how many times you've taken avoidable damage, like you stood in the fire and you took a million damage over the course of a raid night. Um, after that, we're going to talk about how we can make it persist not just between uh, displayings of an aura in a given session, so not just for like a raid night, but between multiple logins. So if you're leveling an alt and you want to say, how much gold have I looted on this character? You can use a weak aura to track that and the information will exist between different sessions. I think I'm going to split this into two videos, one to just track the information and then a second one to persist it because the second one's a little more advanced, a little more risky, and also I don't want this to get too long. So my example is going to be a standing in the fire tracker. What I want is an aura that says, hey, idiot, you're standing in the fire, get the hell out. And also I want it to say, here's how much damage you've taken because you are a terrible player. So to begin with, I'm just gonna make an aura with like a standing in the fire alert. And I'm gonna need a custom function for this eventually. Um, let's see what else. I'm gonna put the text in the bottom, update on trigger updates. Um, for now, I'm just going to make a function uh, return string.format no data yet and done. And let's just make this nice and big. Say 256 by 256. And let's drag it up top center of the screen. So that would be pretty hard to miss. And the next thing I need to do is make a trigger. And I'm going to just use a custom trigger event uh, combat log event unfiltered. And obviously, the trigger I'm using is just for an example. So you would set up uh, whatever kind of trigger you want. Maybe you're even just going to use the drop downs and stuff like that. Uh, and then you could do the tracking number stuff in an event. Um, for damage, it's probably best to do it this way, or damage taken anyway. So there we go. Um, I cut and paste that so you didn't have to watch me struggle through screwing it up. So the first thing is just your typical week or as function header. And I'm taking an E, which is combat log event unfiltered, the name of the event that week or is used to trigger this. Uh, then I'm pulling out some information from that event, specifically the timestamp, which I don't really care about, and the event. So that's details about all the stuff that went on. Um, specifically, it's the name of the event. And there are a few different combat log events that can be fired. Um, I'm pulling it out because I want to check and say, was the event that caused this to happen an environmental damage event? And if that's true, then I've got some extra work to do. And if not, just return false. If it's not uh, an environmental damage event, then there's no way it's lava damage, so I don't need to display this aura. Now, if it is, I need to pull some information out. So I passed in a bit of extra stuff in these triple dots here, and out of those I'm pulling the ID of the unit that was hit, the name of the thing that did the hitting, and the amount of damage it did. And then I'm saying, is the ID of the thing that got hit the same as the ID of the player? Which is just a complicated way of saying, was it the player that got hit? And then I have another check that says, was the thing that hit the player called lava? So basically this whole line just is a way of saying, did the player get hit by lava? And if that's true, then I know to return true. And when you return true, that's a way of telling weak auras that, yep, I really want to display this aura. The last thing I have to do is make it go away. And the way I'm going to do that is just make a timer of three seconds. So now if I go stand in some lava, I'm going to get a warning. It says, hey, get the hell out of the lava. And then three seconds after I take damage, it's going to go away. There we go. Now I want to update that thing to have um, the amount of the last tick I took. Now I pulled that out of the event right here, but this variable is local. You can see that it's prefixed with the word local here, which means that this amount only exists inside my trigger function, and that's no good. I need a way to pass that out to my display function. And the way to do that is to make it global, which is the default thing that happens when you make a variable. So all you have to do is make uh, things like say, lava damage and set it to amount. And now I can access the amount 
through the name lava damage in my display function. But using the name lava damage is pretty generic. I might have an add-on called lava damage, and this would overwrite that whole add-on, which would be no good. Or I might have another aura that's also tracking lava damage for some reason, and they might use the same variable name, which would be no good because now my aura is stepping on their data and their aura is stepping on my data. So usually I prefix my auras with just a couple of things. First, the letters WA for weak auras. That way I know that this is a variable that's supposed to live inside of weak auras. And the second thing I like to do is put my character name in there. Because if I make an aura and I share it with you, and maybe you've uh, imported auras from other people who are doing the same kind of thing, it's unlikely they're gonna put my character name in their variable names. So there's no way that they'll be accidentally using the same name as I am, and I won't accidentally use the same variable name they do. So you can call this whatever you want, but that's just a strategy I use to make sure that I don't accidentally replace stuff. It's kind of like a fake namespace. It works pretty well. So now that I've done this, and I have this WA touchy lava damage variable, and that's global, I can access it inside my display function. So what I'm going to do is just do something like local value equals this. And I'm going to change my text a little bit. I'm going to say lava damage. And I'm going to put the word value here. And if I hit done, now I'll be able to get the value of the last tick and display it in my aura. There we go, lava damage. Uh, copy this, just make sure that all my names are the same. Oh, I know what I didn't do. I need to insert it into my string, so I can't just say lava damage. I also need to give it a spot, which I'll do with percent %d. And actually, let's pretty this text up a little bit. I'm gonna make it really big, and then we'll do something like make it colorful, so bang, or pipe c, ff, um, let's do yellow, so ff, fo, oo. And then we need to end this text, say here. So pipe R, and we'll put this on a new line. And done. This is pretty typical Warcraft text formatting stuff. If you're curious how that works, I'll leave a comment and maybe I'll do a video about it. So now I should get the text of the last tick. There we go, 601, 601, 603. So now I can see how much each tick is doing because I'm able to pass information between my trigger function and my display function. The last thing I want to do is uh, make a running total. So instead of just showing the last tick, I want to show the total amount of damage I've taken. And the way I'm going to do that is come in here and say, instead of making it just amount, I want to make it what it used to be plus amount. Now this code is actually buggy and I'm going to demonstrate that problem after we make sure that it works because it's a pretty typical error. So here we can see I was at 600, 800, 1800, 2400, and if I jump out, it stops counting. And then if I go back in, we'll see that it continues from where I left off. So now I've got a running total of the amount of lava damage I've taken until I reload my UI or until I log out. So I'm going to quickly reload my UI here. And now let's go stand in the lava and we should get a button. There we go. We see we get this error message here. So the, the error we're getting is attempt to perform arithmetic on this variable, a nil value. And so what's happened here is inside my trigger, the very first time I try to do math with WA touchy lava damage, it's not set to anything. It's not zero. It's not blank. It's literally no value. And you can't do addition with no value. You can't append to it. Nils are basically useless. So what I have to do is initialize this to a value before I try to do anything with it. And the way I do that is I say this thing is equal to itself. But that will only work if this has a value assigned to it. If it doesn't, then that will fail. But you could put an or zero at the end. And so now what it's going to do is say, don't change the value of this unless the value of that hasn't been set, in which case, make it a zero. And now when this goes to evaluate, 
instead of being nil and this this addition will fail, it's going to be zero. And you can do zero plus the amount of the last lava tick. Um, we should also do that change inside of our uh, custom function. Just in case, we say value is equal to the last thing or zero. So if this ever doesn't have a value, it'll be zero now and our display text will work properly. So if I go and I jump in this lava here, we'll see everything is fine now. We get a nice running to work. Go out. And we go back in. And we'll see that everything works as advertised. So the next video, I'm going to show you how you can force weak words to save that data and load it back up when you log back in so that it doesn't get reset when you reload your UI. Uh, reload UI. So here we'll see it goes back down to zero from 2400 or whatever it's at. There we go. So the first click is back at 600. So I think that's long enough for one video. The next one will show about persistence. So long.